technique that I'm going to demonstrate in this tutorial is what I call the revolved loft. And this is often used for when you're doing um, typically long, round or cylindrical shapes that uh, are, are a little blobby in terms of they're not something that you could easily make with a, uh, certainly not with an extrusion, um, probably not with a, just a simple revolve, and even a sweep might not work right. Uh, there tend to be a lot of changes in the geometry uh, along the surface. And so a good example of this is this uh, OXO brush handle. Uh, these are just images, product images that I, I got off of a website. I've got a side view here and there's also a bottom view. So I've brought those into this model as sketch pictures and I've gone ahead and traced these side and top profiles using these splines here. Now in this uh, demonstration we're only going to model the handle part of the brush. We're not going to worry about the head part because that would typically be done with a different kind of loft. So just to get these sketch pictures out of the way First, I uh, just want to turn on the transparency here. <coughs> okay, now we can see a little more easily. Um, so the the idea behind the revolved loft feature is if I want to model the back part of this handle here, I'm actually going to model this using three profiles, and I'm only going to model half of it because it's uh, it's tr it's uh, symmetrical. But I'm going to get a top half profile of the of the brush handle, a side profile, and a bottom half profile, and I'm going to go from here around to here around to here. So in order to do this, I need to prepare some additional sketches that are based on these master profiles. Let's start with the side first. Uh, the side profile is on the right plane here. So I'm going to select my right plane. I'm, I'm going to start a new sketch. And I'm going to use convert entities to bring that master profile into this, this new side sketch. So there's two things I have to decide here. First, I need to decide, well, where am I going to cut off this handle? Um, and define the part that I'm going to, to model using the revolved loft. And second, how am I going to split up the top and bottom parts of this? Now I've aligned these sketches so that the origin is going to help me out here in terms of where I'm going to make that split. So I'm going to take my line tool and just draw a vertical line up through the origin here. And this is just going to define roughly um, where the back part of the handle uh, splits from the head of the brush. And I'm going to use my trim tool to get rid of the parts I don't need. Uh, the second thing I need to do is define the split between the top and bottom halves of this handle. So I'm going to use my line tool again. And I'm just going to draw a horizontal line all the way out here and trim it back. Okay. So now I've got a sketch that's basically the top and bottom of the handle. I'm going to hide my master side profile now because I don't need it anymore. Just want to get it out of the way. And now I have to make two separate sketches that are one for only the top and one for only the bottom because these are separate profiles in the loft and they have to be in their own sketches. So again, right plane, I'm going to start a new sketch. I'm going to bring over this top and bottom sketch that I've done. And I'm just going to use my trim tool to trim away the bottom of the first one. So this is just the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing on a new sketch on the right plane. Again, convert entities to bring that top and bottom over. And this time I'm going to trim away the top part. So this is my bottom. Oop. Bottom profile. Okay. And I can hide my top and bottom sketch now because I've got this top and bottom profile in their own sketches. So now I need to do the same thing to the uh, for the side part of the profile, keeping in mind that since the brush is symmetrical, I only need to make one half. So that this one, uh, this top view is done on the top uh, plane. So I'm going to start a new sketch here. 
I'm going to bring over my master top profile. I also want to bring over this uh, axis line here because it goes straight through the middle. And I'm going to use my line tool to split off the part I don't, the, the head of the uh, brush. So I'm going to get rid of this, 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 and this. So I've just, just got the uh, one half of that side, that uh, top view, which is going to be my side profile. And I'm going to call this side profile. So at this point, most of the work is done, actually. Let me hide this mat top profile. I've got, my, I've got my three loft profiles set up. And what I'm going to do here is loft between the top profile to the side profile to the bottom profile in this kind of revolved manner. Um, what's important here, there's a couple things that are important here. For this technique, notice that all these profiles, all three of these profiles, share this center line here. So that's the, they share this edge. Uh, that makes sure there's no space open up in the middle here. It's going to be more solid. The second very critical thing is that the ends of all of these profiles come together at one point. So that's the one at the back. And this is the one at the front. And the way I set up those sketches originally helped me accomplish this. this. The, uh, the master side profile and master top profile have a pierce constraint here, meaning that one is, is intersecting with the, uh, the other one. And uh, I used my, those lines that I drew to split, apart the, uh, split off the head of the brush. They all went through the origin here, so they share this point. So that's very important in this working. OK, so now we can go ahead and do our loft. So I'm using the solid loft feature, lofted boss space. And to select my profiles, I could start at either the top or bottom. I couldn't start at the side, because we've got to go to the top. We, we've got to go in order. So for example, if I want to start with the top here, uh, the next one I need to select is the side profile. I can't go to the bottom profile, because I need to go through the side profile. So we'll do that. Now, these blue dots, you should remember, um, are used to indicate which points of, of the profiles line up with one another for a loft operation. And usually in this technique, in SolidWorks 2006 at least, it almost always gets this wrong in terms of where we want these blue dots to line up. Basically, they have to be on top of each other at either the back point or the front point. The, the loft is twisted this way, and it's not going to work. So all I have to do is manually drag one of the dots to be on top of the other one. And now we see that the top half of the loft is showing a preview. Next, I select my bottom profile. And again, it's put the dot in the wrong place. I've got to put it over here. So now we can see that we've got material lofted from the top to the side to the bottom. Now I just want to click OK here and show what's going to happen. OK. Um, that loft did complete successfully. But remember, we're going to try to mirror this over. And let's just do that real quick. I want to mirror across the right plane. So, you know, it, it, it mirrored it over, but we don't have a very nice smooth transition here at the top and bottom. You know, that's not a very round handle. That's not what we were going for. So here's how you fix that. I'm actually going to go back and edit my loft feature. <coughs> The start end constraints here are what we need to affect. So this is this is uh, what is determining how the loft material comes off of that the first profile and goes into the last profile. Right now, it's just on default constraints, which aren't getting what we want. What we need is for them to be set to normal to profile. And you can see what happened there when I made that change. This is just affecting the top profile because it's our starting profile. Let me set it back to default. Here, it's basically just going, it's taking a short path between the first profile and second profile. If I do normal to profile, that means that the material has to come out normal to the plane that that profile is drawn on in the, in the beginning. So basically, you have a, a, a normal connection here. This material is, is perpendicular to this plane here. And that means if we mirror it over, there's going to be a smooth connection here. So I want to do the same thing down at the bottom normal to profile. 
And notice also that we can determine the strength of that effect. If I want it to spend a little more time being coming straight out from this profile before it starts curving down, I could increase this effect so that I get more of a bulge out here. Now that looks like too much, but let me tone it down to here. And I'm going to increase the bottom one a little bit as well. This is just how you can make fine-tuning, you can fine-tune the shape of, of how this happens. So let's click OK here. Now we've got a smooth connection on the top and bottom for this handle. And we know it's smooth because if we go to our zebra stripes view in the dis view display menu, remember this is the view that you can use to evaluate the quality of of curved services. This is like the uh, the, the rows of, of, of bright lights that they'll put into a, uh, a garage if they're, when they're designing car bodies to see how curvature, how the curvature goes across the surface and looking for weird seams and creases. Now we don't see any weird breaks up here on the top edge. Same thing with the bottom. The zebra stripes are continuous so we know that that is smooth. And that's how you evaluate this display. Turn off my zebra stripes. So that's basically the revolved loft technique.